Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello and welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep right here on YouTube with me, Tom. Before we go any further, I need to explain to you that I'm recording this in mid-July and it is one of the hottest days of the year we've had so far here in the UK for 2021. Uh, this room has reached about 30 degrees Celsius, which is what, I want to say 85 Fahrenheit or something like that, but um, it is extremely warm right now and hence why I've had to turn everything off, I haven't got the display on behind me or anything like that, I'm just trying to run the minimum amount of stuff I can. Uh, to try and uh, generate as little heat as possible, but it's extremely warm. Also, just want to say, as always, a very warm welcome to everyone who has joined us in the recent few days here on the channel. Thank you for your interest and thank you for your continued support and subscriptions to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Now, normally with the channel, we don't generally cover news stories or basically what other kind of YouTubers do, which is what I call ambulance chasing, where they kind of go after every little snippet of drama or tech news they can purely to generate clicks and likes and etc. We don't really do that here. Wi-Fi Sheep generally is a project-driven channel, so those of you that have been with me for a few years now will know that we basically, all the content here is based around particular projects or sort of one-off things that we generally do, basically showing you what you can do in the world of hobby computing technology. There is, of course, one or two exceptions, and this video is one of those. So, basically, if there's a story about the Raspberry Pi, I generally will try and pick it up and share my thoughts with you right here on the channel. So, in the past few days, the Raspberry Pi Foundation's CEO and founder, Evan Upton has been talking to the PiCast podcast, which is part of the Tom's Hardware website. Sadly, nothing to do with me. But on that podcast, he made some interesting comments about the possibility of a Raspberry Pi 4A+. So in the Raspberry Pi line, we have the A and B plus models. Uh, the A plus models was always a slightly cheaper cut down version of the more expensive and expanded B variant. So far, we've had the Raspberry Pi 4B plus with its uh, two, four and eight gigabyte variants. And we've also had the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module and of course the Raspberry Pi 400, which was the all in one system built around the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 architecture. What we haven't seen to date was an update for the slightly lesser Raspberry Pi A+. The current build that's available is the Raspberry Pi 3, or the 3 A+, variant. Now this board, which I covered when it first came out here on the channel, and I actually put it in one of my Micro One uh, plastic kit computers. We're running the Ichigo Jam Basic. Uh, kernel in that video. If you want to see it, it's up here on the screen somewhere. Um, so basically there hasn't really been any news with uh, the A variants for some time. Going through the article and listening to the podcast, the link for that by the way is in the description to this video, Adam actually says quite a few interesting things about how they'd have to cut things back in order to make a, a 4A variant. And also the reason we haven't seen one is because of the international chip shortage, which due to the uh, lockdowns and shutdowns because of the uh, COVID pandemic, there's been a shortage of brand new silicon IC, allowing for manufacturing of products, everything from new game consoles, to iPhones, to laptops, to Raspberry Pis. So what they've been doing at the Pi Foundation is throwing all the resources they can get hold of into keeping up the production lines of their current models and not taking resources away to make a lesser a plus model. Interestingly, Adam said in order to make an A plus viable, they'd have to cut back on a lot of features. Now, some of the things he talked about were the idea about taking the USB 3 off, so the device would just have a single USB 2 socket. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a little disappointing, but um, I guess I'm okay with that. Uh, he also talked about the possibility, because there'd be no uh, controller for the USB 3, 
the uh, basically the IO would be completely unpopulated and available. So we did talk about the idea that the A plus variant could actually have a PCI Express socket right there on the board. That would be absolutely fantastic. So it would allow you to plug in devices such as solid state SSDs straight into the board without needing to go through a USB interface. Another thing mentioned was the idea to save cost of going back to a single full size socket. Those of you that know my feelings on the original Raspberry Pi 4 will know that, that is music to my ears. In fact, since I did that initial video where I was very sceptical of the Pi 4, I've actually been involved in a commercial project to build a desktop system which is based around the Raspberry Pi 4 model. Hence, I actually had version 4s. Where's it got one here? Here we are. I've had version 4 boards actually bought for me for this project. And when I actually got my hands on these, these were still just as much a pain than I thought they were going to be when I reviewed them when it was just an announcement so it wasn't exactly a full technical review. What we ended up doing with the product, you can see in these pictures here, is we actually had to put a adapter back in to convert one of the two mini or micro sockets back up to a full size one because that's actually what the customer base of this unit actually wanted. No one actually wanted the split uh, HDMIs. So I'm very pleased to hear that the A variant will probably have a full-size HDMI socket back on it. I'm expecting memory-wise, it wasn't really talked about, but you're probably going to be looking at something like 2 gigabytes again, which is fine, but you still get the full power of a Raspberry Pi 4 ARM Cortex microprocessor. So fundamentally, I'm actually in favour of this and I'd love to see a 4A Plus product. Now, the A Plus boards in general don't sell as well as the B Plus, or I suppose you could now argue the 400s, because they're very much a sort of hobby board aimed at people a bit like me, or I guess us as a community, that kind of like to build things out of them less so than we would with a full-size uh, Model B. So they would say they wouldn't sell that many, but they wanted to get the price down so there was a good $10 gap between the sort of $35, $40 of a Raspberry Model B and the kind of $20, $25 that you would get a Model A for, which I, again, I can understand. So yeah, it'd be really, really interesting to see if this comes out. If they come out and it's around that kind of, in my case, £20, £25, uh, sort of price point. I'll be interested to see if it actually worked better for kind of embedding into uh, products, basically like the things I've just shown you that I've been working on, where we don't have to use a full uh, B board um, and also you're obviously passing on the cost of that in the end product to the consumer. Um, so yeah, I'd be really interested to see if this materialises next year. I'd be very interested to see if you are as optimistic for a Raspberry Pi 4A Plus model. If you haven't done already, please do like and subscribe to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep, and you can keep up to date with everything that's happening over on Twitter by following us at, at Wi-Fi Sheep. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. This room is now getting insanely hot, so I'm gonna need to end this video right now. Um, hopefully we can call off somehow, somewhere. Thanks so much for watching, keep safe, and I'll see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.